Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar entitled The Realm of Light Emitting Diode. Dr. Usman, an enlightening personality and pioneer of GN based LEDs research in Pakistan. He's also the associate professor at GK Gulam Ishaqan Institute of Technology. We're extremely glad to have him here with us today. I am Fabiha Rahil, the branch advisor of IEEE PFC student branch and also your host for today. Before we begin the session, all of you are requested to keep your mics and videos turned off during the entire session. Towards the end, we will have a question and answer session and you can raise your hands. The host will then unmute you and you will be allowed to put forward your question. Please be attentive during the webinar. Your attendance will be recorded through a Google form, which will be shared in the chat. And e-certificates will be issued to you after a short and easy quiz, which will be sent to, uh, sent to you through email. Uh, the recording of the webinar will, all, will also be provided to you. You will have 24 hours to attempt the quiz in order to be eligible for the certificate. Now, without further ado, we'll hand over the control to our most esteemed speaker, Dr. Asman. Uh, thank you, uh, organizers. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, everyone. I hope everyone is doing fine. Uh, we are going through testing times, and therefore, uh, we are attending this. Uh, we are part of this uh, online webinar. Uh, I wish and pray that everybody um, happens to be safe in their homes, in their places, in their offices, wherever they are. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Um, I shall be talking about uh, uh, the world of uh, light emitting diodes. So essentially, um, uh, I shall be talking about uh, what LEDs are, um, what is the market, uh, especially when we talk about the uh, testing times of today, coronavirus is, uh, um, is, has taken over the world uh, in, and, and has taken over all aspects uh, of lives. And I will talk about uh, how light emitting diodes um, and uh, a specialized lighting have been uh, in, have been used and is now uh, under study. The world is going after uh, ultraviolet light sources to kill Corona uh, COVID nineteen. So um, we. we shall be talking about how, so how uh, the evolution of LEDs is. Uh, um, uh, thousands of years ago, uh, uh, we were using candles. We still, we still use these kind of candles in Pakistan. We have uh, the issue of load shedding. Uh, and then again, energy, energy saving, energy conservation is uh, where light emitting diodes uh, come handy. Then the world moved on to this tungsten bulb, and then the world moved on to uh, this compact fluorescent lamp, which is commonly called as energy saver. Uh, energy saver is actually a very a, a very generic uh, generic term for anything energy saving. So anything that saves energy. So uh, again, uh, the world has, is now moving to light emitting diodes. So this is uh, what now we go in the market. So we hardly get uh, older generation of bulbs. Uh, uh, so we are uh, heading towards energy conservation um, and uh, specialized use of lighting. We'll see how lighting, uh, what is the influence of lighting on uh, on human life on planet Earth. Um, if, there was, if, if there were no light, no sunlight, there would be no human life. So this is how important light is. So, uh, just a brief uh, 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 idea about how uh, light emitting diode uh, diodes work. So, so we have electrons, we have holes, and whenever electrons and holes are allowed to combine in some active layer, a light is generated, and this light emission is what you and I observe. And you and I observe this light even right now on our computer screens. If if anybody is using LEDs, LED screens, we are seeing these lights on our mobile indicators. If we are using uh, um, AMOLED displays, anybody using Samsung phones, even uh, uh, any state of the art or modern phone phones or high end phones use light emitting diodes as as uh, in their displays. We'll see um, how LED. 
life. So, uh, and yeah, we design. And, the, and this is uh, how the light is emitted. And this is not for light emitting diode only, by the way. Generically, anything, uh, anywhere electrons and holes recombine, for example, sun produces light. So this electron hole recombination works in the sunlight as well. Electron hole uh, recombination has to occur uh, in, in, in um, every place. Uh, electron has to lose the energy so that it could get, uh, it could release the uh, energy to emit light. So again, some benefits, uh, no hazardous materials, uh, uh, little to no uh, heat, uh, last thousand of, uh, thousands of hours, and we'll talk about this uh, further. So this is a schematic uh, from uh, a research article which shows how light emitting diodes uh, uh, or specialized lighting can work uh, not only for uh, cure, ultraviolet cure, large screen uh, displays that I just mentioned, backlights of our devices, mobile phones, again, we talked about this. Uh, lighting is a specialized uh, uh, source of studying uh, biomedical, in, in the field of biomedical uh, uh, treatments and not only treatments, but analysis uh, as well, analysis of the samples. So without light, uh, it is difficult to analyze samples. So uh, again, paper money identification using um, uh, specialized uh, uh, wavelength. Uh, we all know about Wi-Fi, but this is when uh, this is where the world is trying to move, uh, uh, and this is Li-Fi, light fidelity, which means that the source of light, which is illuminating our rooms right now, will be able to transmit data to our devices. So we may not be able to use, uh, there, there would be no use to have um, a separate Wi-Fi routers to transmit data. So what the only thing we would uh, need is a light source, which we already have in our homes, our offices, and everywhere. And they, those light sources will be transmitting data uh, to and from our devices. Light emitting diodes have taken over the automobile industry, headlights, brake lights, interior, and so on and so forth. Um, this is, uh, uh, I was talking about uh, LED displays. This display is uh, in Times Square. Uh, anybody using Samsung Edge uh, or Edge, Edge phones uh, know how these curved displays are taking over the world. So these displays are not possible without uh, the without this uh, without uh, uh, the existence or uh, use of light emitting diodes. So there is a fierce competition, LED from LED light emitting diode to organic light emitting di diode to quantum light emitting diode to micro light emitting diodes. So companies are racing and trying to outrun each other. So there's some, we, we can see what is LG doing. Uh, and then there's a, one of the largest, in fact, largest, uh, um, the largest uh, uh, LED screen is uh, in uh, has been placed uh, on uh, Burj Khalifa, the world's uh, tallest uh, building. Um, so uh, again, uh, some of the applications in water purification. So we have light emitting diodes uh, in particular wavelengths. So partic in particular wavelengths, uh, they can be used uh, to disinfect. Uh, germs they are used in light therapy they are used for bug zapping from that they are used in solid state lighting we all know ultraviolet is used in disinfection uh, it is commonly used by den dentists uh, and they are, um, it is used in sterilization sterilize of the equipment um, uh, again uh, uh, this was what i was trying to tell you that uv light is uh, everybody's going after it like crazy. So everybody is trying to use UV light to kill COVID-19. So this is uh, every now and then we come across this news every now and just after this uh, COVID-19 happening, we are getting uh, this news every now and then that new equipment has been developed, new technology has been developed where UV light is used to kill uh, COVID-19. This uh, UV light has successfully worked for SARS-CoV-2, SARS, uh, uh, commonly known as SARS. Uh, uh, this was again a respiratory uh, syndrome. 
uh, and uh, UVC, uh, this is the same UV that we were talking about. UV is the entire range. C is a particular wavelength range. B is a particular wavelength range, and A is a particular wavelength range. So this is uh, where um, UVC is taking over uh, uh, COVID-19. The battle is fierce. There are uh, reports coming in. Uh, these are some scientific. Uh, this is from a scientific journal. So far, UVC light uh, uh, it has been reported to to efficiently uh, inactivate airborne human coronaviruses. So this is uh, what we are uh, reading every now and then, um, uh, and some other reports from WebMD, Medical Express. These uh, COVID-19. So just this UV-based industry, we are not talking about other red, green, blue wavelengths, we are which is increasing uh, every year. So from 2017 to 2023, it is predicted to increase from the double two three to double nine one. So again, most of the part will be invested in the UVC range, and this is where UVC is coming handy uh, in killing uh, viruses. So again, Amazon, Amazon has built this uh, uh, UV robot to kill uh, or disinfect surfaces in, in, in stores and um, in warehouses. Uh, New York transit agency, subways, uh, buses, uh, worldwide it is being used uh, to, to kill coronavirus uh, viruses uh, or kill coronavirus on the surfaces of uh, public transport. Um, this is the article uh, from, I'm just trying to build up my case for the, for how useful this um, light is in, and it, it is, it is changing how, uh, how, how uh, we live our, we live our lives and we deal with day-to-day -day cases. So this is uh, ultraviolet light installed. This is a schematic showing ultraviolet light installed in, uh, in lifts, uh, elevators which means that in a public place, it's a public transport, public place setting. So ultraviolet light is used in various public places. And this is what uh, the disinfection, this is how, this is how the disinfection uh, 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 has, uh, is, is, being, is being used, the disinfection part is being used to kill, especially for COVID-19. It has already proven for SARS, as you just mentioned, but COVID-19 is the new, um, is the new rage everybody is going after it. So some other some benefits in the health industry. So lidocaine diodes are used in uh, in, in therapy for uh, endothelial cells in dermatology. Uh, these are uh, especially these kind of uh, generous pub uh, advances in wound care. So they are telling us that ultraviolet radiations are have been reported, and they, there are multiple reports which suggest that these radiations are really helpful in wound care sterilization. I mentioned earlier in my, uh, in the start of my talk. Um, uh, again, some dermal skin uh, uh, healings. Uh, uh, they have been shown to produce uh, vitamin D3 in human skin and uh, they are, LEDs are used to um, address the seasonal affective disorder. So this is um, uh, from Lighting Europe. Uh, so they have uh, made um, uh, a fancy schematic which shows that how much lux is light lumens per unit area. So how much light is how much lux uh, is uh, for um, for for a regular sunny day, uh, for a cloudy day it, it reduces, uh, and then for indoor in offices in our houses in the schools, and uh, most of the time people spend uh, a lot of time indoors, so a lot of energy is uh, spent. Um, uh, 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 for the indoor uh, indoor use again, uh, uh, this is a range of uh, uh, color temperature we may discuss in, in, if if asked in, in question answer session. But this is how color temperatures are uh, identified. If, if you see, if anybody has uh, light uh, this um, um, light emitting diode bulb or uh, its uh, wrapper in their uh, its uh, cover box in their house, they can see this uh, color temperature at the back of the um, at the back of the cover. So when we want to relax, uh, human body respond to this kind of uh, this kind of warm light. So warm light, cool light. So there are different variations. These are general names, but technically they are specified as in in terms of color temperature, eighteen hundred. 
to, for example, 16,000 kelvins. So colors are normally we, we identify colors in terms of temperature, in terms of uh, wavelength. Um, so red for red, it is 630, and for blue, for example, 480 or 460. But uh, when we talk about colors in terms of temperature, so particular temperature uh, for particular temperature um, in, in Kelvin, so we have a particular kind of, so this is all white light spectrum, but warm white light, cold white light. So whenever the body has to behave energetically, we have to be in this uh, uh, zone of uh, white light. And whenever we want to relax, uh, we have to be in this zone of uh, uh, lighting. So what I'm trying to say is that lighting has strong influence on our day-to-day -day, uh, human life. So again, light emitting diodes are used in marine life. Uh, so when we talk about marine life, so same plant is grown under white light, under blue light, under red light. And we see that the plants are grown differently. The shapes are different. Um, the, the, growth, uh, the growth size is different. So just by choosing a particular wavelength, we uh, clearly see that uh, uh, how lighting not only affects um, uh, human life, but it, as I said in the start, sunlight, if there was no light, there, were, there would be no light, life on earth. So if there is life, it is highly influenced by uh, the kind of light we, um, we, we use in our daily lives. So um, again, in in in, pol in poultry, um, in poultry farming, uh, different kinds of lightings have been reported uh, uh, and have, have been shown to um, uh, have been shown to have a different uh, 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 reproductive traits on, uh, for example, chickens, and uh, we, we can see the titles of these uh, these uh, uh, these interesting studies. So how novel lighting can change the behavior, physiology, welfare of the poultry, and some very specific articles are uh, uh, are shown. Um, again, uh, the same idea of also for a certain broiler, uh, minimum amount of light is studied for a, for a certain period per hour, uh, number of hours per day. So for a certain boiler of certain weeks, so each, this study has been conducted and this is uh, showing how uh, uh, the influence of lighting, not only the wavelength, but the amount of light and the amount, not only the amount of light, but the photo period, hours per day, can so much specific, specificity, uh, specific, um, and so much specificity, so much specificity of the uh, uh, details. So, uh, okay, again, uh, this this um, this uh, slide is showing how LEDs are influenced uh, influence the world of agriculture. So, light emitting diodes. So, there are books written. So, not all plants require all the wavelength for their growth. We just saw uh, in the previous uh, uh, couple of slides. So, for example, certain plants do not absorb this spectrum. So, why are we interested or why are we wasting the energy by providing this amount of light to the plant? Why don't we specifically provide uh, a particular wavelength which allows the plant uh, to grow uh, and, uh, and optimally grow, actually? So, when it comes to sunlight, sunlight provides everything, but not all plants respond to all wavelengths. So, these are some these are some companies. For example, LED Grow Strip uh, has been uh, has been proposed by um, by companies where this strip is uh, is rounded around a plant of a, of a particular wavelength. This is not white light, for example. This is purpley shade. So, these strips are uh, are uh, um, are twisted around uh, these plants so that they could grow optimally. Uh, again, um, a lot of, uh, in terms of environment, uh, since an light emitting diodes are energy efficient devices, so the world is moving from um, regular street lights, sodium lamps, uh, and other tungsten or conventional light sources to LED, light, LED lights to save energy, to save environment. Uh, and this is what uh, you know, the, the leading uh, uh, magazines are talking about. So, in terms of uh, expected market growth, for example, this is for 2020. So, this is the LED market uh, if, if you're talking about only 2020. So, 
this is the 86 billion dollar market as of today revenues are growing per annum 30 percent dollar 15 uh, billion uh, yearly energy saved this is the amount of greenhouse uh, uh, saving because regularly what we produce uh, from for, for regularly what conventional sources the way the conventional sources are produced we consume more energy and more environmental uh, and they're least environmentally friendly. So cost, not only cost saving, but um, in terms of focus, in terms of energy saving and whatnot. So this is uh, again, uh, um, how the world is ado adopting the uh, light emitting diode. So um, again, this is uh, mar the market trend, which is showing from, from 2013 to 2020, how this market is picking up and how the world is going through the phase out schedule of incandescent bulbs. So from uh, Europe, we even have plans to, uh, to uh, phase out uh, 100 watt or 75 watt bulbs. So on and so forth from 2009 to 2012. So this is how the developing world is proceeding uh, and pro progressing to uh, phase out conventional light sources, not, to, not only to save energy, as I just said, but to save the environment and to, sa uh, and to save uh, all uh, the unnecessary spendings. So the markets are growing from uh, display market from 2013 to 2020. So from display market is expanding, for example, um, uh, what else? Uh, so efficacy is increasing, initial cost is decreasing, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is how global LED application market from automotive industry, as we saw in the use of the slides, from general lighting that we uh, have been talking about, backlighting, and which of these LED uh, LEDs are in, are in are in most demand, which is high brightness LEDs, uh, um, especially this is for for the automobile industry. Um, so this, uh, these light emitting diodes are used for curing, water purification, R&D, medical phototherapy. We have been we just talked about a lot of these things, or at least we touched on a lot of these things. So we can see the trend is uh, it, it happens to grow. This is up to uh, year 2015, but again, if we if we plot further, so we can see that this is how the world is going. This is the this graph is only showing how emulated this is the display technology, latest display technology used in mobile phones, a lot of you might be aware. So this is how this uh, this display market is picking up. Um, this is the global LED uh, market, which is uh, expected to grow to 96 billion or 97 to 70 million dollars by 2024. So all the big companies are uh, have already jumped in the business to uh, uh, to grab these these benefits of light emitting diodes, all iPhones will ditch LCDs. So iPhones are known for their LCD displays, but again, um, these giants are shifting towards uh, uh, OLED OLED displays. Um, uh, giving some uh, uh, pertinent comment uh, co comments or uh, giving you some pertinent insights. So this guy is um, Roland uh, Hires. This is uh, more. This guy is uh, to LED industry what more is to ICs. So he predict, predicted that every 10 years, uh, the light generated by LED would increase uh, by at least, uh, by a factor of at least 20 times, and the cost will decrease by a factor of at least 10 times. So his prediction has been uh, on, uh, on the line. Um, his prediction has been pretty much, um, uh, pretty much right. So this is how the cost per lumen is decreasing from 1970 to 2020. This is how the light output is increasing uh, by a factor of 20. So those who are studying electronics, ICs, they know what Moore's law is. Uh, so this was this is again an empirical law, like Moore's law, which was also an empirical uh, law. Uh, so. Uh, these guys, uh, these three guys won Nobel Prize uh, for uh, producing efficient blue light emitting diodes in 2014. So this, uh, their Nobel Prize further picked up the industry. This guy is the father of light emitting uh, diode. This guy uh, has reported light emission, but again, uh, uh, a, very young, a very young energetic guy, but he could not explain how that light emission is uh, is happening, but uh, earliest reports uh, tell that this that somebody has reported light emission. Again, we have uh, at least further uh, older reports. Um, but again, when we talk about light emitting diodes, so these three these uh, legends are uh, mostly uh, cited.
So these are some international societies which talk about lighting and photonics, so OSA, SPI, this is what we have in GIK, student chapters, IEEE has dedicated society, photonic society. This is International uh, Commission on Elimination. They, they, uh, uh, they, they govern the coloring scheme, which wavelength has to be uh, given what, uh, because most of the wavelengths are overlap, green is overlap, green wavelength is overlapping yellow and green is overlapping blue. So meanwhile, in, in, the, in the middle of the overlapping, uh, so they, they govern the coloring uh, schemes. This uh, uh, society uh, essentially governs what amount of light is suitable for, for example, office or what amount of light is suitable for gymnasiums or sports grounds and these kind of uh, illumination standards. Uh, they maintain these kind of uh, illumination standards. These are the three, four uh, top uh, magazines which are dedicated to lighting. Um, Sustainable development goals, uh, a lot of students in the house will be aware, uh, will be aware that UN has uh, 17 sustainable uh, development goals and these development goals, the color of these development goals essentially is uh, related to the colors shown in this uh, symbol, uh, which is a symbol for the International Day of Light. So the lighting is, uh, the importance of lighting can be again uh, cannot be further emphasized that there is uh, one uh, whole day which celebrates the light. So again, uh, and all these goals are met by light emitting diodes in one way or the other. By in, in for example, if we are talking about hunger, this is talked about agriculture, health and well-being. We just talked about again when we talk about quality education. So lighting in uh, in in uh, the education uh, field or uh, uh, again, gender equality in this uh, in this uh, field of photonics or lighting and so on and so the clean water. So all these development goals are uh, one or the other met by um, uh, light emitting diodes. So this is a comparison of how a traditional incandescent bulb compares with uh, the light emitting diodes. So for for so if we assume that all these bulbs are producing the same amount of light. 1600 lumens. So the most electrical energy will be consumed by traditional incandescent bulb and the least amount of energy will be consumed by light emitting diode. Similarly, most number of hours will be, um, uh, will this uh, light emitting diode run for and uh, 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 the least uh, expensive among these is uh, the incandescent, uh, traditional incandescent bulbs. So least expensive comes with the price that its lifetime is very low. So you have to keep uh, updating uh, or changing your device. So this is the color temperature thing that I was talking earlier. So this is shown at the back of um, your uh, typical LED bulb. So if you anybody has these covers, so you can read these uh, these color uh, color temperatures. So different color temperatures respond to different as we saw in the earlier image. So warm light it lies in in one in in at the at one end and. Uh, um, uh, daylight or uh, or bright daylight lie in the higher end of the uh, color temperature. So these are some standard lumens per watt, which means that how much electrical energy you give uh, to a bulb so that it could produ produce more lumens. So lumens per watt means that this is lumens divided by watt. So we, any bulb which produces more lumens with least amount of uh, energy is uh, uh, has has higher efficacy. Um, the standards that we were talking about that what uh, the red, how in, in a typical sunny day what is the light intensity and uh, for example um, a typical forecast night or a full moon what is the light intensity so which is suitable for classrooms for example and which is suitable for theaters and so on and so forth so this uh, question is uh, extremely important that we already addressed that why light is produced in the first place so as I just said, electrons recombining with holes uh, release energy and that energy is uh, uh, where uh, uh, light is produced. So uh, the difference between LEDs and lasers is if I could show in um, the simplest words. So we have this incoming photon, it energizes this electron, electron gets to this higher energy state. Once this electron is in the higher energy state, uh, it has to come back uh, to its ground or equilibrium state. Once it comes back, it releases this uh, gained energy. So once this releases this gained energy, this is, this is the emitted photon. 
uh so when you talk about leds it is essentially spontaneous emission when you talk about lasers it is stimulated emission so we have an electron already in the excited state this incoming photon comes this gives uh, uh this allows this electron to release this uh, to come back to the ground or lower energy so this photon um, after doing its job um, passes through and this transition generates a photon so the incoming photon with the emitted photon they are in sync therefore we say lasers are coherent uh, light sources because the all all the uh, light um, photons produced are in sync with each other uh maybe i will sp skip this slide so this is what uh, are three five nitrides when we talk about gallium nitrides so gallium is in uh, third group and the nitrogen is in fifth group so combination of these two these two elements results uh, has, has resulted in uh, gallium nitride uh, so three five compounds were discovered by this guy uh, henrik volker uh and uh, further uh, uh, development on his work so these two guys uh, won nobel prize um, Uh, by using uh, heterostructure layers, uh, the hetero heterostructure means that uh, one layer uh, on top of another, and the two layers have different composition. So these guys won Nobel Prize. So just this 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 very specific area from the Nobel Prize. Uh, this is in twenty. This is in two thousand. So this uh, from this area to the area of uh, light emitting diodes further uh, the blue efficient light emitting diodes which won Nobel Prize again in twenty fourteen. So again. this means that you might be i i assume that uh, i'm i've enough convinced you that what is the importance of these devices or um, uh this whole entire research area so again uh, if i could simply in in simplest possible words if i could tell so we have electrons in the conduction band we have poles in the valence band so we try to this is heterostructure so we have one material aluminum gallium arsenide gallium arsenide so two different materials these are same materials so this is homo junction this is hetero junction so electrons and holes are allowed to uh, be confined in this very specific region and then they are allowed to recombine so that we get photons and this is how we see the emitted light uh the, this uh, gallium nitride has uh, a very interesting uh, a lot of interesting features but one of, the, one of the interesting features is that we can uh, tune this um, we can tune this uh, material so that uh, based on the kind of light you would like to emit so if you would like to emit violet light or blue light or green light so just by changing the composition we can um, we can get the amount of light. so we, what i'm trying to say is that this is not a material with a fixed emission of light so we can uh, vary its composition by, in terms of how the light uh, in terms of the wavelength that we are interested in so these are a few efficiencies uh, wall plug efficiency voltage efficiency injection efficiency radiative efficiency light extraction efficiency uh, so just uh, briefly so for example what is voltage efficiency it is the average photon energy emitted uh, from the active region so photon energy is the energy h nu that we were talking about earlier so i would not like to go back and forth because this will disturb the entire uh, webinar so this this is average photon energy emitted from the active region and average electron energy supplied by the um, uh, battery or uh, electrical supply then we have injection efficiency how many electrons have been injected into the active region per second number of electrons injected into led per second so i will skip these things if asked i will discuss them so the two main efficiencies uh, we work on is uh, the internal quantum efficiency which means that how many electrons have been or how many carriers have been confined how many electrons have been provided to the uh, to, to the to, to this region and how many have been successfully uh, converted to photons so we would like to convert each of this electron to a photon which no which does not happen therefore we don't have this um, uh, efficiency 100% efficiency so the ideal case is that each of these carriers has to be combined so that we get the uh, desired photon and then we have external quantum efficiency this is what our eyes observe uh, so light has to come out of the device one problem is to generate light within the device other problem is to generate light or let the light out of the device so letting device uh, letting the light out of the device is external quantum efficiency so this has its own con uh, constraints so you have to know the refractive index of the material you know refractive index shifts uh, or uh, bends or plays with the light so this is a typical problem of um, uh, light emitting diodes especially gallium light emitting diodes which is efficiency droop 
So ideally, we would like to have this uh, linearly increasing light output, but we don't have this linearly increasing light output. As the current density increases, we have this decreased light output. And similarly, the internal quantum, quantum efficiency, uh, the ideal case is this uh, black line, but this is the practical case. And this is uh, uh, the case we are always trying to solve. So getting to the ideal case is difficult, but getting close to the ideal case is always uh, an opportunity uh, that we keep uh, exploring. Um, again, some technical things uh, I would uh, just uh, skim through if asked, we'll talk. So ideally we would like to have radiative recombination, but uh, practically we have some other non-radiative recombination mechanisms, leakage and OJ and SRH. But this is how we would like to get our, uh, this, is, this is what we um, are most interested, interested in. So there is always a race. These are injected electrons, these are injected holes. So there is always this race that either uh, uh, radiative will win or SRH will win or J. So simultaneously this process, entire process is happening. So we would like to control or make or design our device in such a way that our engineered device uh, 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 has, has, has the best uh, or most radiative recombination uh, among all these. So this is a range of other uh, technical issues. Um, so why we have this group or decreasing um, uh, decreasing energy efficiency. So we have OJ recombination, we have um, kinetic delocalization, polarization charges and so on and so forth. So we talked about or or flow. Uh, OJ recombination is nothing but uh, the recombination of uh, electron and hole and the extra energy which is released as photon, it's not released as photon but it is taken by, taken up by another carrier and so on and so forth. Um, Again, uh, a lot of factors control uh, internal quantum efficiency. This, this, C, this C parameter controls OJ. This A parameter also controls OJ. SRH that we just talked about, SRH and OJ. Um, again, temperature has a strong influence on the characteristics of the device. So the same device working at 80 Kelvin has a different characteristic than the same device working in the, in the 300 Kelvin regime. Um, this is mostly where we work on green, green LEDs. Currently, we are working on UV LEDs. We have some interesting results, but we are working, we are in the process of uh, uh, accumulating our uh, results. Uh, but this is, this, is, this is where we talked about the most in our uh, earlier slides. UV has been taking over the world because of the COVID-19 and its success in SARS. Uh, and other disinfection. UV is commonly used as a disinfectant in the sterilizers, even before SARS and even before uh, other uh, viruses that we know of. But recently, this has picked up. Even China has introduced some buses. Uh, um, uh, uh, we just saw an article. Uh, airplanes are trying to use uh, the leading air. Uh, air airline companies are trying to use uh, UV lights in their cabins so that they could disinfect uh, again airplanes, buses, their public transports. Uh, these are some issues uh, related to gallium nitride. Uh, if asked, I will discuss why this mismatch uh, happens and why then this leads to um, uh, different efficiency issues. Uh, this is some, uh, these are some interesting real light emitting diode images. Uh, so we have different kinds of electrodes uh, shown on your screen. This is an infrared image, infrared image, infrared image of the same device, infrared image of this device, infrared image of this device. So uh, again, as we change the current, we change the brightness. And uh, what we try to observe is that we are, uh, the current is being blocked, current spreading is one another area which uh, hinders the good performance of uh, the device. So this is, uh, uh, give me a second. Uh, so this is uh, what uh, we have been doing um, um, uh, for some time now. So we um, came up with the most efficient light emitting diode, uh, not the efficient, but we were the first to uh, uh, present uh, experimental built-in field of uh, green light emitting diode. Green light emitting diode is uh, a very trouble, troublesome uh, uh, wavelength. So this is uh, for the first time, uh, uh, we were able to uh, present to the world. Again, this is the device we present for the first time to the world that uh, a lot of first, a lot of com uh, compositions, combinations are reported in the literature, but this is the first time that we came up with this all coordinate device uh, uh, in, our, in our work. 
these curves are showing um, the conventional device versus the uh, proposed efficient device. Again, conventional device, regular LED with the reference LED, which is supposed to the uh, WLED, and a lot of uh, these results, which may or may not be of interest to you. Again, this work was very important uh, because um, we came up with this uh, analytical model, mathematical model to, to predict the efficiency of our uh, uh, of LEDs, both the green and blue wavelength range. And interestingly, we were able to successfully predict uh, how uh, predict the efficiency of green and blue LEDs uh, with a with a with a mathematical model. Some some other work. Um, uh, is shown. Um, this shows how expensive this research area area is. So to get uh, hand to get our hands on the most um, uh, advanced or state of the art tool, we have to have at least uh, uh, twenty million uh, rupees in our uh, kitty, which we don't have. Uh, so uh, some bitter truth, but we may ignore this bitter truth for now. Uh, again, if we this is for uh, for the standard simulator, this is this is the huge this is a huge bag. Even if you go for experimental setup, which does not include uh, material cost and other costs, running costs, this is just capital expenditure. So you, you can see this is again a very huge number three, four, five, six, so fifty-two million now we would require. So in of course in Pakistan we don't have enough funds and enough money to um, to do such an expensive research. Um, uh, um, again, we are pushing through the dirt. We are thriving in one way or the other. So this is uh, one of the streams that we have in GIK, which is photonics stream. So students learn about photonics, uh, photonic network communication, devi photonic devices, biophotonics, lasers and applications. So anybody who is interested in this kind of research area, any students in the house, uh, even for your master's degree, you have bachelor's program, you have master's program. So you may uh, contact me. So this is a range of uh, fields which photonics has been um, uh, um, touching on. We talked about lighting, we talked about displays. We did not talk about uh, communication, but we talked about medical technology, COVID-19 and all those viruses and therapies we talked about. We didn't talk about how this is useful in production technology. Optical components, uh, your uh, these optical components are your cameras. Everybody has mobile phone today, and uh, mobile phone without a camera, lensing system, optical components is uh, it's just not possible. So defense and security. Recently, we came. I, I came across this news that US has built a, a laser, high power laser, and they have hit uh, a drone, and they have uh, successfully um, destroyed that drone. So the world is moving towards laser, uh, laser guns, laser beams, uh, rather than um, uh, hefty, expensive aircrafts. You have to have fuel. You have to go and fight just with a laser beam from a distance. From a distance, you can destroy your uh, enemy or your targets. Uh, photovoltaics market is everybody's aware. So the market is uh, uh, is uh, thriving, and you can talk about renewable energy. So this is uh, uh, these are some beautiful faces that I work uh, with. Uh, they, without their assistance, uh, I don't think any of this work uh, would uh, be possible. So I'm extremely thankful to these uh, lovely people. Uh, so this is uh, one amazing guy. I'm not sure. I cannot see the participants if he's in the conference. So just last year, he won three consecutive uh, prizes from three uh, conferences of uh, national records. So those who know what Kinstech is, those who know what National Center of Physics is, and those who know what NUST is, they would uh, know what these prizes mean. So again, I'm thankful to this uh, chap as well for working hard enough and uh, pushing the boundaries. And that's it uh, for today. Let there be light. Thank you very much. Organizers, please take over. Any question related to webinar, please raise your hand and then I, I will allow to unmute your mic. Okay. 
Abdurrahman, uh, there's a participant who wants to unmute. Can you please unmute him? Hello, uh, this is Hasi. Uh, I'm from Audi, France. And thank you so much for having me here. I have uh, some questions. Sure. Uh, well, Mr. Dr. Usman, how are you? I'm good, uh, Hasib. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. Well, so thank, uh, you for, you, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And can you, can you go to slide number 29, please? Okay. So now you can go. Uh, Sip, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Um, uh, Bilman, uh, can you please allow him to unmute? Yes, yes, yes can you hear me? Yes, sir, yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, yes, okay. Uh, sir, can you go uh, to slide number 29, please? Yes, can you see my screen? Okay. No, I, I cannot see your screen. Uh, I'm not sure why it is visible. Uh, organizers, can you see my screen? No, sir. No, there's an Just... issue, sir. Please, re can you reshare it? Okay. I let me reshare my screen. So, is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Oh, sorry for I thought it's 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 on. So, uh, yes, uh, Hasi. Okay. Well, uh, you have talked about the sustainable development goal, and uh, you have uh, talked about applications, LED markets, and and all. So, uh, I want to ask you that you know, uh, everybody knows in today's today's era. The climate and the global condition is more specifically important than any other thing, uh, I must say, uh, in these sustainable goals. So what effects, like what effects can the incandescent light may have in the climate actions? And what are the effects that the LED lights are prohibiting them? So why we, why we are having the LED lights? Why the, why the world is running behind the LED lights? Why? according to the climate conditions so if uh, you have seen my this slide where All i was right. talking about energy conservation and uh, the greenhouse uh, saving uh, or reduction in the greenhouse effect because of the led lighting and this is for the projection for 2020 mm -hmm. so i think this uh, would answer your question pretty well because in incandescent lights uh, they consume more energy and whenever we talk about more energy more resources are used more resources are used so that uh, those resources have uh, their burden on the climate, on the environment. So we would like to reduce that burden on the environment and the climate, not just by reducing the amount of energy, but we would like to have a device or lighting source, which would also decrease the greenhouse uh, influence. So yeah, this is, uh, I would like to comment on this, on your question. All right, all right. And and uh, please, uh, and if you could, if you, and if you could yeah, uh, read yeah, out yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have noted that already. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, slide uh, number slide So after I get your question, uh, I would like to know where are you talking uh, from, and are you working on the similar research area or? Uh... No, no. I'm uh, I'm um, I'm in Audi in France, <clears throat> and uh, I have very good friends in GAK uh, really? who has the Photonics and who is currently studying photonics and okay, uh, Audi, so, we are working on the zero emissions. So I have handed over projects so, of LED in Audi. So interesting. So if I am picking you right, Audi is the car brand. If I'm picking yeah, the accent yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, I'm, I am automotive engineer. I don't have any background on the photonics, but this is new for me. So that's why I'm, I was very interested in thank this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I hope you, it would interest you. So slide number yeah. six. 11, 11. 11. Okay. 
<laughs> so can you see my screen yeah yeah i can see your screen okay. i think that is 15 15 is the appropriate slide not this 15. one not let me see okay yeah yeah this one, yeah, this one. <laughs> okay. so, uh, I have a question regarding the uh, the temperature, the, the color temperature. Okay. So, fact is, these uh, color temperature are dependent, like thermal air quality or just the light. So this comes from the fact, uh, if I could uh, explain. So once, uh, for example, when we when we heat the iron, <laughs> so heating the iron a different temperature gives us different light spectrum. So All sometimes right. in a, at a different temperature, this is the temperature that I'm referring to. So at a certain temperature, the iron would be orange, at a certain temperature it would be yellowish, at a certain temperature it would be golden. So these color temperatures actually refer to those, uh, uh, so to those particular uh, to those particular temperatures which emit particular color so at a at certain high temperatures uh, uh, this you can easily google this so you will have a white white emission from that uh, that iron uh, that iron rod or iron uh, source so this these uh, temperatures correspond to that uh, those particular colors because because if i could show you um gradient colors gradient colors if i could show you somewhere um so so if, if you can see the screen so we so this is the entire white range for example this is the entire white range so it is too difficult to to uh, distinguish one white color from the other unless we seriously move away from the so in a given range we would like to differentiate this the, this differentiation with in, in terms of color in terms of this temperature all right all right all right all right i was just confusing it with thermal comforts like air temperature wall temperature okay yeah thank you so much thank you so much no issues thank, thank you, you for so coming much, thank you for coming Thank you, sir, for the question. Uh, do we have any more questions? Participants, you may raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Okay, uh, sir, uh, in the meantime, uh, I have a question. I hope you won't mind. Uh, I just wanted to discuss about the differences between, you were talking about the differences between LEDs and lasers. Uh, I missed uh, that part, but I wanted to know what was actually the difference. How do we stimulate uh, the radiation, and what is the mechanism behind mm. stimulating? Interesting. So, so just give me a second. I should remove this window from here. Lasers. Okay. So what you don't understand so that, that i could start from there do you understand this part yes yes sir uh, i was able to understand the difference uh, between spontaneous emission and stimulated emission but okay. i wanted to know what are what is the actual mechanism that goes behind stimulating emission uh, as far as so, my understanding goes emission is a spontaneous process so yes what kind of yes thing? yes this is the spontaneous process and this is not only in leds but it is also in regular incandescent light sources or compact fluorescent light sources but in lasers we the idea is to to to, to have this external stimulant this external stimulant to allow this uh, downward transition to happen and this downward transition would allow the emission of a photon in addition to the photon that was already there. Thank you very much. Do you understand my point? Uh, yes, uh, I get I'm So why is, this called, why is this called stimulated? Because we have stimulant. This happens naturally. This uh, electron has uh, is, ex uh, is in excited state. After some time, it will come back to its equilibrium state. Fine, but when we would like to 
stimulate this downward transition with some external stimulant, which is a photon in this case. So this stimulated emission, which is the S part of this light amplification mm -hmm. by stimulated emission of radiation. So this stimulant causes this downward transition rather than natural, rather than natural okay. transition. So this is natural. This is uh, 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 with this uh, stimulant. So uh, if I've gotten your point right, uh, we have an external photon that provides energy to the uh, electron. And then uh, because of that energy, uh, it is able to transition downward. Yes. Thank you very much. Sir. Do we have any more questions from the participants? Uh, you can also uh, ask questions in Urdu. One one question in chat. Raise your hand. One question in chat. Uh, yes, you can also write down the questions in the chat. What exactly are you guys working on LED topics in JIKI? Do anyone works on communication using Li-Fi? Uh, this is a question for me. Why can't I see the chat? Uh, so chat, the, chat, the chat, questions chat. can also only be sent to the host. Oh, okay. Okay. So just give me a second. Um, okay. So we are working on uh, on, 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 on these kind of things. Uh, if you are able to see my screen. Um, so we are, uh, I just said, as I said earlier, we are either doing mathematical modeling or we are doing uh, band gap engineering, quantum well engineering, where we do simulation and try to propose efficient, uh, efficient devices. So this is what we do in uh, uh, NGIK. Uh, and uh, your next uh, part, uh, next part of your question is about uh, about what? About Li-Fi. So yes, Li-Fi is an interesting area. I haven't uh, personally explored that area yet, but uh, uh, maybe in future worth trying. Thank you very much. Do we have any more questions? Abhirman, do we have any more questions in the chat? No. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Abdur, sir, can yes, you please uh, stop your screen sharing? We'd like to share some things from our site. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Abdurman, can you please put up the image? So this is a very small uh, token of appreciation from our side. Due to the COVID-19 situation, we are quite bound. Uh, we would have loved to present a physical token of appreciation. Uh, and perform a shield to you as we normally do with our speakers. But uh, for now, I hope you can make do with this and you can understand how grateful we truly are for this opportunity which you have provided us. Thank you Thank very you. much for the Thank very interesting question. I am humbled. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we would also like to thank all of our participants for joining us. Your time is very precious and we hope that we were able to deliver something useful to you. And uh, as I mentioned before, that there will be a short quiz at the end. It will be emailed to you through uh, you can, uh, it, uh, it's a, a Google form, I guess, and you can open it. There'll be about five to six questions and uh, the responses will be emailed to you. You can verify it. If you score 50%, uh, you will be eligible for the e-certificate and it will be also sent to you within one week. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, this is goodbye for now. Thank you. We Love hope is. to see you again soon. Love Thank mm -hmm. you.